Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD Broadcast Studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News. I'm Sarah Brewer with your news from around the Columbia Basin for Friday, April 5th. Tonight, we'll review some of the top stories for this week along with a few of your favorites. In sports, the Columbia Basin Riverhawks take the football field again on Saturday. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the iFiber One Weather Center. Our top story tonight, no new trial for David Nichols. His conviction for the murder of Afreda's Sage Monroe stands. Grant County Superior Court Evan Spurline denied Nichols' defense attorney's request that he reconsider his decision on whether the 30 two-year-old Helena Montana man should get a new trial. Nichols was convicted in September of murder in the first degree following a two-month-long trial. Defense attorneys argued another afraid of man was responsible for Monroe's death. Following the trial, the attorneys asked for a new trial claiming they had new evidence, including a reported confession by the man to two jail inmates. They also claimed the police report violated Nichols' right to confront witnesses and wanted another hearing to question the two potential witnesses. Spurline denied the defense's arguments, and Nichols is scheduled to be sentenced on April 12th. For more on the story, visit us online at iFiber1.com. A man accused of setting fires across Soap Lake in September is going to jail. Rory Ogden pleaded guilty to reckless burning in the first degree and malicious mischief in the second degree in Grant County Superior Court. The 49-year-old Soap Lake man was sentenced to three and a half months in jail. His first fire was in a field on Main Avenue on September 24th. The second was at the golf course on 2nd Avenue. The third was at an old elementary school, and when a police officer went inside, he found an tw area of 20 feet by 20 feet burning. A fourth fire was set on Fern Street. A 66-year-old building in Efreda's Basin Street is gone. Demolition started this week on the former location of Denny's Pit Stop. Efreda realtor Jack Patrick said the land is being cleared. Half of the ground is being rented to the neighboring espresso stand and half to Barry Chrysler. The building started its history as an expansion to a Ford dealership. Following World War II, the owner of the dealership decided he needed more space and had the building constructed. The dealership was foreclosed on in the early 1980s. It was then purchased by Sam Israel in 1984, but remained vacant until Denny's Pit Stop rented it about 10 years ago. The auto repair shop operated in the building until January when it closed, Patrick said. Patrick explained that it was less expensive to tear down the building than do the necessary renovations to rent it. If any renovation equals more than 50% of the assessed value, then the city requires that it be brought up to city code. Governor Jay Inslee made a visit to Moses Lake this week to celebrate the opening of a new business. Here with a story is Ryan Lancaster. Washington Governor Jay Inslee joined District 13 Reps Judy Warnick and Matt Manweller Friday in cutting the ribbon on a facility that's bringing dozens of new aerospace jobs to the Moses Lake area. Aviation Technical Services is expanding from their Everett home to a newly renovated 100,000 square foot hangar at the Grant County International Airport. Since opening in 1970, ATS has provided maintenance, repair and overhaul services for commercial and military jet aircraft. ATS President and CEO Matt Yerbeck said the company hopes to grow in Grant County. And just so you know, with the 50 folks that we've hired now, uh, we, we really hope to be able to hire another 100 here in the next couple of years as we uh, start to develop more programs and have more work in. So very excited about that. Inslee used the ribbon cutting to point out Washington's place as a leader in the aerospace industry. Well, uh, thank you. This is a real delight to be governor of the number one aerospace state on the planet Earth. And it is a delight to know that 
We design the world's best airplanes in Seattle. We do aluminum in Everett. We do carbon fiber down south. And now it's great that we have the world's best aerospace recycling company here in Grant County today, right here. In Warnick said she was surprised to see how fast the new facility came together. I was a little skeptical. I said, I'll, I'm there for you, I'll support you. But I didn't think it was going to happen this quick. So it's very, very exciting to see the port, see the community of Moses Lake, the county, and the state come together and, and provide these good family wage jobs here in Grant County. More on this story is available at iFiber1.com. For iFiber1 News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DOC asks that you do not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call the police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We'll be back after these messages with the latest from our iFiber One Weather Center, sports, and more news.